Augusta, Georgia is the second city of Georgia behind Savannah. And it's the third largest in the state. It's the home of James Brown. And you never know, you just may catch a glimpse of a tiger during the Masters, which is held here every year. But Augusta has a somewhat seedier side as well. It's a city fighting for its identity and against a dark, dark past. Hi, welcome back to Keeping History on Two Wheels, and I'm Andy Crutchfield. Hopefully you'll like this video, and if you do, hit the subscribe button right over here. Don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll be notified whenever we do an upload. And apparently, the thumbs up has uh, an effect on the algorithm, so go ahead and hit that too, and if you feel like it, leave a comment, because I check them every day. Augusta is the home to the U.S. Army's Fort Gordon, and the NSA has a large footprint here as well. My favorite casual dining is here too, the pizza joint over on Brawl. They have outstanding formal dining, such as the P.I. Bar and Grill over at the Partridge Inn as well. Along Broad Street, they have nice little parks and several old style staged theaters. But like this one, there are many more closed and vacant theaters than there are working ones. Augusta has an absolutely beautiful river walk as well that runs all along the Savannah River. But enough about Augusta and their current state of affairs. Let's get to the history at hand. The first marshal of Georgia, Robert Forsyth, was born in Scotland in 1754. As a teenager, he moved to this country with his family, where they first settled in New England before moving to Fredericksburg, Virginia in 1774. At the age of 22, Forsyth enlisted in the Continental Army after the start of the Revolutionary War. Forsyth rose to the rank of Major of the 1st Virginia Legion on March 21, 1781. After the war, Forsyth returned to Fredericksburg, but moved to the Augusta area in 1785. He soon established himself in the new community by becoming a member of the Board of Commissions, where he worked successfully to acquire a new jail for the county. He also worked as tax assessor, justice of the peace, and trustee of the Richmond Academy. By 1792, he also owned 6,000 acres of land in addition. Forsyth was a member of the Society of the Cincinnati and the Masons. He became master of the lodge, Columbia, and Deputy Grandmaster of the State of Georgia. President Washington appointed him Marshal on September 26, 1789. Forsyth was 35 years old at the time. On January 11, 1794, Marshal Forsyth, accompanied by two of his deputies, 
went to the house of Miss Dixon to serve a civil process on two brothers, Beverly and William Allen. And yes, Beverly was a guy. Beverly Allen, a former Methodist minister from South Carolina, saw the marshal approaching, so he, he hid in a room on the second floor of the house. When Forsyth knocked on the door of the room, Allen fired his pistol in the direction of the knocking. The ball hit Forsyth square in the head, killing him instantly. Marshal Forsyth became the first U.S. federal law enforcement officer killed during an adversarial action. The deputies arrested Allen only to see him escape after about six weeks. Allen fled to Rogues Harbor, Kentucky, a known haven for criminals, where he re repented and died of natural causes 23 years later. In 1789, Congress passed a Judiciary Act creating a three-tiered justice system that includes the Supreme Court, a Circuit Court of Appeals, and the lowest tier, a District Court for each state. Congress recognized the need for administrators to assist the judges and created the United States Marshals Service. The marshals would be responsible for a range of duties, serving subpoenas, summonses, warrants, making arrests, paying fees and expenses, renting jails and courtrooms, and ensuring full pitchers of water are available during proceedings. President George Washington appointed a U.S. Marshal for each newly independent American colony. At the time, only 13 states bonded under one democracy. The new president drew from the ranks of the colonial army recruiting respected Revolutionary War veterans, such as Lieutenant Colonel Nathaniel Ramsey of Maryland, who exhibited extreme bravery at the Battle of Monmouth. Henry Dearborn of Maine and Isaac Huger of South Carolina. Tragically, the death of Robert Forsyth was the beginning of a long line of federal law enforcement officers who would die in the line of duty. Since the murder of Marshal Forsyth, 200 U.S. Marshals and Deputy Marshals have given their lives for their work. On one day alone, the 15th of April, 1872, eight deputy marshals were shot and killed at a courthouse in the Oklahoma Indian Territory. Forsyth, 40 years old at the time of his murder, left a widow and two sons. One of the boys, John, became governor of Georgia and later U.S. minister to Spain. While at that post, he negotiated the treaty acceding Florida to the United States. John Forsyth also served as the Secretary of State under Presidents Andrew Jackson and Martin Van Buren. Marshal Forsyth is buried in St. Paul's Episcopal Church Cemetery in Augusta, Georgia, and you can visit his grave site where he is buried without any of his family members. His lone grave is situated in the northeast corner of the cemetery. He was laid to rest next to Brigadier General George Matthews of the Continental Army. Thanks for watching Keeping History on Two Wheels. And if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. It's right over here. Don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll be notified whenever we do an upload. Remember, every trip starts with a step. And that step, well, it starts with you.